Hello, welcome to another podcast. So this is another quick update on my Unraid system. So what I've done is, and I did a little quick introduction video to this earlier, is I got hold of four, well, uh, quite a few actually, um, SAS drives, four terabyte SAS drives that are enterprise drives. And I decided I'd put four of them in my Unraid system. And I've got another project that I will show you um, later that I'm going to use another nine for. And actually I got 14 in total. So there's five in the Unraid system. And then I'm going to use eight in another project. And then I'll have two spares. That's the plan anyway. But getting them working in my Unraid system was a little bit, uh, well, not exactly difficult, but had a few little things that needed sorting out. So I'll show you those now. So the first thing is I got a, a fairly cheap drive cage to put them in that takes five and then obviously connected four up uh, to the PCI Express SAS controller and use these cables that convert um, SATA to SAS power and data because obviously I needed to do that for my system and one thing that I needed to do actually was if you put a normal SAS power connector onto those converters the drives don't work because there's a voltage going down a one of the pins that shouldn't be. So to get it to actually work that I hadn't done at the point when I filmed this was you put a Molex adapter and that gets around that problem. So you have a Molex adapter to those SAS power connectors and then it all works fine. So that's quite nice. You can, uh, you can easily sort of um, get those Molex adapters. They're pretty cheap and available pretty much anywhere. I just got two and then was able to use them to power the four drives. And then getting them to work in my Unraid system was pretty straightforward. And so obviously um, I plugged them in, powered it up and it detected them and you can see them now in use here. So two in my RAID, uh, sorry, in my array, not RAID, this is uh, Unraid is not RAID. <laughs> so two in my uh, array here that uh, adds, adds some, uh, some extra space because I was starting to get a little bit low and so you can see that data has started um, being copied onto those and then the other two because this is the new version of Unraid this is 6.9 I've put in a separate pool and the idea is I've called it databases and the idea is that some of the database programs that I use Unraid for will be able to store data on those drives and I actually haven't copied them across yet but if we go to my docker I think what I will do is move MyraDB and MongoDB onto those drives and for now I'll leave Neo4j where it is because I think it benefits from the speed so that's quite nice and they all went on there pretty easily just with that slight um, thing that I forgot but was reminded of when they didn't work was which you can't use a standard uh, SATA power connector to those converters you have to use a Molex connector which is a Molex adapter to SATA rather and then you can uh, power them up fine otherwise either they just get into a reset loop because there's power going down a pin that they don't use um, so that's just something to bear in mind if you've got a converter like I had and you're wondering why your drive doesn't work it might be because there's power going down that cable and if you get a Molex converter it'll probably work fine uh, just to bear that in mind these are the drives I've got so mine are actually Dell branded but uh, Dell Enterprise Plus they're called but they're the same as these um, so there's so Seagate uh, drives I got them very cheap um, but knew they're 150 pounds so it's actually quite a, I've got 14 of them very cheap so that's quite good uh, mine of course used as is most of my computer technology which obviously makes a difference um, and you can see the, the, the model name there the only thing that I have noticed is they're running a little bit hotter than perhaps I'd like so these you know they're reporting it sort of nearly 50 degrees and same for these here now these drives are rated to 60 degrees so they should be okay but that's a little bit warmer than I would ideally like 
Uh, but the way I can get around that actually is the all the fans in this system are tied to the CPU fan speed. So the next time I reboot the system, I'm just going to increase the minimum CPU fan speed up a little bit, and it probably won't make much difference to the noise, but it might just increase the airflow a little and drop those temperatures down a teeny bit. So that's it. Uh, so it was very straightforward putting it all together, um, but I was quite pleased with the outcome, and there was just that one gotcha, which is... Uh, use a Molex to SATA converter and you won't have any problems with the drives getting locked in a reset loop. Okay, well, so um, thanks very much and I will uh, see you in the next podcast.